I think what, what motivates me and my philosophy behind, I mean, I love to paint. I, I love to uh, work. Uh, there's lots of reasons for that. Some of them are personal. Um, and um, some of them are just the, uh, the joy of creating something that never has existed. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is um, in science when uh, the scientists tell us that the universe is beyond our imagination. Uh, that stretches me a long ways. And then, and then uh, Mark Twain talking about the last frontier was the mind, you know, and, and different things like that. So it's, uh, the, those are like challenges to me, those, those different aspects. And then just the personal reasons and the feelings that I get of creating things sometimes bring up an, just an abundance of joy. We're so far out of the, uh, the town in here, it's, uh, it's like that Clayton just gives it a name. in the arts for a long time um, although yeah, I, I at one time I was a railroad conductor I was 23 years old and I was a, and I got uh, promoted to uh, conductor on the railroad for the Santa Fe and that lasted a little while and at the same time I was doing murals I was under an apprenticeship with William Radley and I was auditing some classes at uh, the college taking figure drawing and things like that and still working on the railroad and uh, we were doing these huge paintings. I was his apprentice. Um, and he kept telling me, we're gonna have to make a decision sooner or later, you're gonna have to paint or you're gonna have to work on the railroad, what's it gonna be, you know? And so, um, I, I believe I made the right decision. I'm pretty happy with it. I know he'd be real excited about a lot of the things that's been going on the last few years. I'm sure of it. I mean, I'm taking right off on everything that, that he showed me and uh, taught me. Uh, that's for... This is a uh, titanium uh, base paint here, a ground, and also with a lead white and uh, t turpentine and uh, linseed oil. And that works real well. It'll dry flat and chalky. And then after the final uh, coat there is applied, why I'll have to uh, put a thin wash of turpentine and linseed oil across the mural so that it'll, it will absorb that and then it'll take the uh, paint and the glazes much better when it's all, when the, when the colors start going in. There's going to be almost a total of six to eight coats of different paint in different areas. So you have to build it up slowly. Now this is just the final ground and it will also be used as a uh, underpaint too. It's like I was saying, it's like the beginning and the end of the ground. The ground is a, a, a pretty good process. It, uh, it's rabbit skin glue underneath the white here and then two coats of white. And that's a real important uh, process for an oil painting because um, otherwise the paint will start to crack. So um, that's one of the problems with oil painting is you have to watch what processes you're using and what colors. And then the colors too are, um, some colors fade. Um, 
that are out today too, so you have to watch what chemicals are made with to make sure that they're going to last. And this is that uh, linen. It's just a fine surface. It's one of the finest surfaces that I've ever used. It's actually a portrait canvas, and uh, we had it shipped from back east for this project. I'm putting in is um, I'm putting in a uh, oh a painterly type sketch that's going to give me all the guidelines of uh, for the uh, form once I start to apply the color and uh, that's really going to help once uh, all the details uh, start coming together. Actually, all this painting, very little of it will even show through. Probably, I'd say less than 5% of this. So it will just be touches of it poking through when it's, uh, when we have a complete painting. But this will be so helpful in um, making this piece you know, appear to be real. And the ideas are the hardest thing to come up with. I think the foremost challenge was the, uh, to be able to try to portray a community with the traditional values that Cupertino has and still be able to come across with a, a contemporary uh, movement. Um, and then also come up with a view for the future. I'm kind of a history bug myself. I like to find out why things are the way they are. And that, that has influenced me artistically. Cupertino is, is certainly a different entity in its own, although it's from the same uh, regional area that, that I am. And uh, that, that in itself may have helped with the rolling hills uh, and then the, the farmlands. Uh, this area that I live in here used to be much like Cupertino, where it, where it had the open fields and, and the agri our agriculture, you know, which is, has disappeared from the whole Bay Area. So uh, we, we all have uh, come through a lot of changes uh, in the past years. And of course, uh, Cupertino being in, in sort of the best of two worlds of, of at the same time held on to some of its heritage and still been a, a forefront runner in the uh, contemporary world. In the, in the beginning there was, uh, God, there must have been about 10 or 20 thumbnail sketches. Soon as I heard about it, I mean, I, I sat down and I did some real, like, just quick line sketches, you know, like almost kids would draw in, in two or three minutes. You know, if I was going to do this project, what would I do? And then I, what that does is that assimilates 
a shape and a form in my head. And then I go out into the world, which happened to be Cupertino, and look around for that shape and form that's already germinating in a creative way to take place. And then I photograph it. I like to work in black and white because it takes the uh, contrast um, in uh, nice shades of gray and then that helps me to uh, determine what colors I'm going to use because the colors are all spontaneous and, and when I work from a negative photograph what, what that does is that separates the lights and the darks immediately so in other words I'm not concentrating on the picture per se I'm concentrating more on just what is light and dark. And then that gives me maybe a little truer uh, view of the uh, scene. The modulation and the movement of the color has, has all got to flow together. And if, and if it's not done evenly, then, uh, then it won't flow. Yeah, I made uh, at the stage of putting the main body of color on, and uh, it's basically uh, where the, uh, the whole strength of all the all the little details are going to ride uh, once uh, once that's done. And it's important to try to get that on as even as possible, so all, all the parts are, are as are as a whole. I just used the two reds, the three blues, and the two yellows, but out of all the, those combinations, there, there are just hundreds and hundreds of different tones that are possible. So it is pretty exciting, really. Yeah, I've got some really nice things going on here right now with these leaves. I, you can see how the red against the green has a real warm and cool uh, balance going on at the same time and that just gives it that integrity the way it, it balances itself from cool to warm, warm to cool. It makes it real pleasing to uh, to view. See, I notice this, this little bit of blue that I'm putting on here. I really like that. That's going to tone down eventually, but you can see the inner reacting that it's doing with the red. And what's exciting about painting, and I enjoy the most, is that as it, as it starts to go on, uh, the colors seem to talk. And you can see this blue is toning down already. I, I've got a little green in the brush, too, at the same time. And, and I'm loading the brush up with different colors as I go along. So, and I'm almost using the brush like a palette in some instances where it's mixing color as, as I move along. Uh, it just sort of happens naturally.
so this one's a little bit later. I'm taking this over here. 98, 3, 4, 2, 3. Just in case you, I don't know if we'll get that tied into the wall. Yeah. It'd be good if we do, but we might not be able to either. I want the, the piece to involve the viewer. Uh, I want to try to get some participation out of people that, that look at my work. Chairman of the Cupertino Fine Arts Commission. On behalf of the Cupertino Fine Arts Commission, I welcome you to the dedication of the Cupertino Historical Mural. And now, I would like to introduce you to T. Scott Sayre, the artist and the mural creator. up here, I got to say that. But, uh, and there are a lot of you um, here who have given so much of yourselves to make this uh, event possible. And I believe that uh, our efforts will be seen to have brought both pride, joy, and an under understanding for many years to come. You know, throughout the project, I feel like I've become a member of uh, the community. You know, and I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to the community of Cupertino for allowing me to share my work with you. Thank you. This project maybe shows a progression of a, 
of a positive community. Uh, not so much more that it's trying to make a statement of what not to do. I think it's more of what to do, you know, and it just shows some of the, uh, probably the, the happier moments in the, the history of uh, Cupertino, which uh, I think positive reactions are really where the solutions lie anyway. If people can view it and they don't need to ask and they can just see it, then, then I think it's the job's done. And as far as the time goes and the accomplishment, I'm mainly doing this kind of work because I want to. Um, that's why I do it.